also to those out there. I think I'm a bit old to learn old tricks, new tricks, right? But I'll try to talk to you as well. We'll see how we go. Our text this morning is the Gospel for this Sunday. And I'd like to read to you again just the words that Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah and then applies to himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to hear Jesus speaking those words to us also this morning. Help us, Lord, to understand that each one of us is addressed here and that each one of us is, as Selena just said, your favourite child. Help us to apply these words to us that we may live by them. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good advice to the poor. Is that what he said? Ah. Oh. So what's the difference between good advice and good news? Anybody? Anybody out here? They're a bit shy in here. Good advice. All right. Yep. I mean, we know, don't we, that Jesus didn't say good advice, neither did Isaiah for that matter, but he said good news. And so how do we tell the difference? What's good news and what's good advice? I guess eat your greens and wear your seatbelt is good advice, right? They tell us to do something. They might be called, you know, rules or principles for living well. And there's nothing wrong, of course, with good advice. In fact, we often need it. But it's not good news. Right? It's good advice. So what's the difference between good advice and good news? Well, good advice focuses on what we need to do. People will often say, that a sermon that's full of a lot of good advice is very practical, right? Because it tells us what to do. It tells us how to act, how to live. And there's a place for good advice in the Christian church, right? There's a place for good advice, but it's not good news. And if all we get is good advice, then we're gonna miss the main point. In the Bible, good news is about what God does. Good news is not what we need to do, but what God does for us and to us. It comes from outside of ourselves. It often surprises us. The Spirit anoints Jesus then to bring good news. Love others as God has loved you. Good news or good advice? Good advice, right? Very good advice, in fact. Your life will be better if you do it. You'll have more positive relationships and you'll make the world a better place. People will also be more likely to treat you well. Not only that, it's how God intended you to live when he created you. In short, it's very good advice indeed, but it's not good news. 
God has forgiven you for Jesus' sake when you fail to love others as Jesus loved you. Now that's good news, right? God has forgiven you when you don't take the good advice. And that's good news. Good news that sets us free from sin, sets us free from guilt. In other words, good advice only takes us so far. It can only deliver so much. To be sure, it can show us how we don't measure up, but it doesn't make us more loving. It can lead us to despair because we become aware of our failure or in a weird sort of way, it can kind of lead us to a mistaken sense of self-righteousness as we start to think it just means, you know, do your best. Or at least, well, at least we do better than other people do, right? And so good advice only takes us so far. And so our text says that Jesus came to bring us good news. Here again, the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now, of course, there may be one or two of us here this morning who is actually in physical poverty or is being held captive or is actually blind or oppressed in some significant way. But if there isn't, then do these words still apply to us? Because I can't say that I'm physically poor. I can't say that I'm captive. Ruth lets me out every now and again, right? Okay. I can't say that I'm blind, even though I need glasses to see. And yes, there are things that annoy me that I may find oppressive, but I'm not really oppressed in the way many people around the world are. But, each, but elsewhere, Jesus also teaches that each of these things has a spiritual dimension, if you like. There are the poor in spirit. There are those held captive by sin. Those who claim to be able to see but are blind guides. And those who are oppressed by the devil. And all of a sudden, I can identify here. All of a sudden I can see, yes, that means me. And the good news is that Jesus is undoing the work of sin and death in the lives of people. And that includes everyone, not just those with the physical afflictions. Your non-Christian friends and family and neighbours probably don't want all your good advice about how you, they should live their lives, right? Your non-Christian friends and neighbours probably have good advice enough and there's a perception out there that that's what Christians really are all about. Mostly they don't want to hear that. They don't want to be told that. But people everywhere still need good news. Many people seem to think the church is about good people becoming better. Let me say that again. Many people seem to think that church is about good people becoming better, when it's actually about bad people learning how to deal with their badness, with their failure to be good. And that's why we need good news not just good advice. The church is a hospital for sinners 
it's not a finishing school for saints. Right? It's not somewhere where we who are already good people learn a few tips about how we might become even better and probably more obnoxious to those around us, right? Rather, it's a place where we who recognise our need and recognise that good advice is not going to get us there. Here's some good news that actually sets us free and actually, strangely enough, enables and empowers us to become just that little bit more like what Jesus is for us. The good news is that Jesus heals us and reveals God to us. And that's not something we deserve. Often you hear people protesting that they want justice, right? Justice is a good thing. But you won't find me protesting that I want justice. Justice terrifies me. Because justice means I'm going to get my just desserts. And that ain't going to be pretty. We don't need justice in terms of our relationship with God, but rather we need mercy. And that's pure grace to someone like me who deserves judgment and condemnation. At its core, this good news is forgiveness. Not because I try hard or am good enough, but in spite of the fact that I neither try hard nor am good, but only because of Jesus' death and resurrection for me. He died the death I deserve in my place, so I'm forgiven and receive life and salvation, and that is good news. Not good advice, but wait, there's more. Sounds like a sales pitch, doesn't it? But there is more. Jesus says today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Not some distant time in the future, but today. Right now. That was true in the Nazareth synagogue all those years ago. And it's true here this morning. It's true when we bring good news to others. Right then, in that moment, everything that needs to be done has been done. And since it's been done by Jesus, there is absolutely nothing left for us to do. You just receive it and trust the promise. Because the Spirit anointed Jesus to bring good news to each one of us no matter what our failures and weaknesses are, no matter how we've performed in the past, no matter how we're going to perform in the future, there's good news for people who fail. There's good news because how we do is not relevant to that good news. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Help this good news to sink into the depths of our soul so that we may rest in your grace, so that we may know that we know that we know that we are forgiven, so that we may know that you love us, that you've given your son Jesus for us, and therefore we are your children. Help us, Lord, to be secure in that promise. Thank you that you sent Jesus to bring good news to us and to our world. In his name we pray.